Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? It's Nate McAllister with my guest, Alex Moss. He is going to get a water, and we will get started here in three minutes. In a uh, tactical arbitrage cup, mind you. Yes. I am pumped about this announcement. This is going to be one of our, uh, we've already got 18 people here. This is one of our more, uh, more registrants for this webinar than we've had in a long time. I think that the rumor mill has kind of started with what the announcement might be, and I'm excited to uh, have you finally share what it actually is. Yeah, we'll wait for a few more people to come on in before we uh, drop the news, but um, I'm super pumped too. I mean, this, this particular feature has been um, quite a while in the works. Uh, it's been in the background of my mind for a long time, but the logistics of making this happen has been um, pretty fun. All right, it is eight o'clock, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day uh, to, to hang out with me and Alex. We appreciate that very much. All right, I will, uh, if you guys don't know him, you, uh, this is Alex Moss, the creator of Tactical Arbitrage, which is the premier online sourcing uh, tool and it's expanded well beyond online arbitrage. Now it's used for people use it for wholesale It's got an awesome wholesale analysis feature uh, and then you can use it for uh, retail arbitrage all different types of powerful features You have to check it out to really understand How powerful it is and for one dollar with code er14 you can get a 14-day trial um, I will share that over in the comments uh, But other than that this this webinar is not a pitch on the software. This is kind of a balance between uh, content for existing users who are just dying to know what this new feature is, and then Alex is also gonna demo it. And then there's gonna be some basic uh, uh, training type of stuff that we do in, our, in these webinars, uh, you know, just regularly. Q9. We'll do that after. So that the people who, if you don't wanna watch the training, that's fine. I don't want you to sit around and wait for an hour until the announcement, so Alex, has said that he will go ahead and uh, and spill the beans on the new feature. So with that, Alex, you ready to uh, you ready to share the announcement? All right, let's do it. So um, this particular feature, uh, I've always thought with tactical arbitrage, there needs to be two critical factors. Um, to uh, everything else is polished, right? But the main two things are speed and accuracy. Now we recently solved accuracy in many ways. Um, we uh, introduced the image matching algorithm which tied in with the title matching algorithm and uh, it, it's giving some, some extremely clean results and, and the days of people complaining about mismatches uh, for the most part long behind us. Um, but I really want to next focus on speed and there's a bit of a bottleneck when you're actually doing searches. There's only sort of there's only sort of a certain path you can sort of navigate by the time you've actually looked over at this site and you've done all your checks and balances and then you've um, compared it to Amazon and then you've sort of laid that down in your view data page. And uh, so obviously the ultimate solution would be uh, simultaneous scanning. So um, that would mean you would start a scan, for instance, over at Target and then you would say, well, that one's running, let's get one started over at Bye Bye Baby. Okay, that one's running, let's get one started over at Big Bad Toys. Okay, that one's starting, let's get a reverse scan started. Okay, that one's starting, let's get a wholesale scan started and, um, and just, just keep on running these scans and so that they're simultaneously running and your view data page is just getting data and data and data and even your VAs can't keep up with the sheer volume of, of deals. And you can imagine um, previous Black Fridays, for instance, you really have to pick and choose which one am I going to scan? I mean, everybody sort of wants to sort of get on in there and start scanning these, but which particular one will I scan this year um, and, and see whether or not I can you know, make some profit on this? Well, why don't you now start your new egg scan and then maybe Bass Pro's got a Black Friday deal, start that one, uh, then start your Best Buy scan and then just simultaneously look at all this uh, all this data coming in. So I'm really pumped about this because um, the, the concept is one thing, 
the logistics behind it is another thing and it's and and it's taken months to put this together in any kind of way that's tangibly working and i still feel it's getting close to a week before it's ready for release because I, there's some whistles bells and polishes i want to put on it just to make sure that it is intuitive to use and that um, the servers obviously can handle the load because there'll be additional searches from a lot of people coming in. But um, I've got a working copy of it on my screen here that I'm happy to show you. And when I first started playing with this working copy, I was excited. I was like, like I, I don't think I've been this excited about a feature release in a long time. I mean, you can get excited about things like, yes, we've added an average average price column into view data you can get excited about you know a lot of the different features that we can sort of add but to me it's always been kind of the holy grail to um, just maximize the amount of data that can come at you uh, so that you know you you don't you're not having that limitation there's a lot of people i know sam's one of the people he's in the chat today who have multiple accounts so that they can run these simultaneous scans across multiple accounts. And it's actually costing them more money because they're paying for additional accounts. Well, I believe that this feature is going to allow people to close those accounts. So, I mean, that's gonna be at, at, at a cost to me, but uh, at the end of the day, it's all about me bringing value to tactical arbitrage and to the users of TA so that uh, we, we are the premier solution when it comes to um, scanning, not just for online arbitrage, but for wholesale, and, and uh, reverse searches and so on. So at the moment, this particular feature is working across product search, reverse search, and wholesale. I am gonna also integrate the library search into this as well. Um, and uh, it's not as important for um, Amazon Flips to, uh, uh, but we will probably be adding that in, in the near future as well. So um, if you're cool with me, showing my screen at this point, then I will show this off. I'm a, bit, a little bit proud of it, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy using it. You should be um, a lot of bit proud of it. And yes, we are okay with you sharing your screen. Guys, I don't know if you, if you missed it, the, the update is multiple scans at one time. And Alex, as he was saying, if you have multiple accounts, which a lot of people do, um, hopefully this is gonna make it so that you, uh, you don't need them. But don't cancel those yet. Wait for it to come out and, and use it, right? Um, and then and then look into into that. But that's the goal. And Alex, that is awesome. I hope everybody wraps their mind around that. How sweet that is. If you guys were here for the announcement, Alex is about to demo it. Um, and then if you want, you can catch the replay later. I don't want to keep anybody here. There's no other announcement. There's just going to be some discounts, giveaways, and some some trainings later on. So if you were just here for the announcement. Alex is gonna demo it and uh, you can uh, head on about your day. Alex, go ahead. I'm gonna cut my video to save on bandwidth. No worries. And yeah, and if you are an existing user and you're sticking around to see this feature, then I'll also talk about another feature after this that I released last week, which I think is super cool. And uh, I wanted to showcase that as well. After that, we will get into a few um, Q and A's and that might end up being a, um, a few newbie questions and stuff. And if you're a seasoned user, you may decide to bounce out at that point, but definitely stick around for this um, for this little demonstration. Uh, and I will share my screen. All right. So now this is a regular dashboard, but let me go into this new tab here. Now you you will notice that this has not yet been unlocked for your particular account, but I'm aiming to have this. Um, active within the next week. And it's one of the reasons why Nate for this webinar has a 14 day trial um, on offer instead of just his regular sort of seven day trial because uh, we want people who jump in now to still get to experience this feature um, after we've released it. And I, I still think it's a few days away. So let me go into Process Manager. And you'll see that I've got some simultaneous scans happening here. So at the moment, I've got a Bye Bye Baby and Walgreens scan uh, to Amazon. I've got a Big Bad Toy Store scan happening at the moment, going to Amazon. And I've got a couple of reverse searches happening as well. Now, um, if I was to start another scan here, and I might as well do that. Um, 
Now, this is great too because uh, we kind of work on, um, you know, there's limits to how fast you can make, make uh, calls to Amazon. So we kind of work on um, within those limits. And the good thing is, is that other countries like the United Kingdom, for example, have their own set of limits in place. So if you sort of maxed out your scans for uh, mm. an American search, then you might want to then start maxing out your scans for a UK search. This is really going to be good for people who are working in multiple um, locations. So you might want to then start maxing out your Australian scans and then you might want to start doing your Japanese scans. So there's plenty of different um, avenues for you as long as you're sort of working within that one set of keys. So for example, um, the US keys also covers Canada and the UK keys also covers European markets. Japan's for Japan, Australia's for Australia. Uh, but this, this process manager and queuing system will allow you to sort of ride those waves in a way that best suits your particular workflow. So I'm going to start another scan right now. Um, let's do a UK scan. We'll go 365 games. I'll clear this. Now, there's some of this going to be changing for launch. For people who are familiar with the Easy Bulk system, um, because of the whole uh, starting a new scan, starting a new scan, it's, when we're starting a new scan, it's going to ask if you'd like to clear the Easy Bolt current list each time. Because personally, I find when, when beta testing this, that I'm always clearing this Easy Bolt um, Easy Bolt system to start a new one. So uh, a few little things like that are getting tweaked just before release. Um, also, there'll be a little feature here to let you tick multiples, multiple categories here, and then add to bulk rather than just one at a time because I've found that that's not really a reported bug, but I did find that I found it a little personal annoyance to have to continue to, to add to bulk and then start a new one and add to bulk and then start a new one, et cetera, et cetera. So a few little things like that happen um, and will happen in the coming days before we release this. And I'll just start that search. For the sake of this, I'm not going to, really get into adding filtering or anything like that. I just want to kind of show you what happens um, over on the process manager now. We've got this additional product search here, which is scanning uh, for 365 games. And uh, the data starts appearing here. And you can see that these scans are running. I uh, started running these a little bit before we started today. Um, I'm going to go over to uh, start another USA scan now. Let's go oh, start a new search and we'll just go Walmart. And we'll just do, I mean, this is just an example. I don't really recommend Walmart toys as the, um, as the best place for people to search, but um, for the sake of this demonstration, all right, a couple of logos I've got to fix here like that. Uh, that probably shouldn't just be the little Walmart start. We'll make that into Walmart. And I did the same, had the same issue for Target. Actually, I need to get the right logo in there for that. It's very small things, but um, see these little logos here? This is another small thing too, but we're going to be also uh, adding a little bit of color to the product search page with the logos visible as well. Uh, you'll be able to add your own logos to your XPath sites as well so that you can, you can make those look a little bit colourful as well too, if you want to. But um, the, the main thing here and the story that we're really looking at right here is that all these scans are happening simultaneously. So um, let's see what we can find. Okay, let's have a look at this Walmart scan that's running now. I'm just going to click view data. You're thinking, how does it all mix together? This is crazy. This isn't going to work. Okay, but it is working because right now I'm just I'm looking at all the Walmart.com scans. So this is just the Walmart results here. You're not seeing a big hodgepodge of results. It's all the one view data page, but now there's this extra little drop down menu up the top here that says you are watching process 234. Okay, you go over here. Oh, that's correct. It is process 234. I can see that. But um, if, if process 234 is a little bit jarring for you, then you can also do this little mouse over scenario here where you can have a look at your scans um, just to see which one you want to have a look at. And there's also the all results option as well where you can just have a look at everything mixed together. So pretty cool, hey? Um, you've got all these scans happening at once. You can have a look at just the ones that you want to have a look at. 
or you can have a look at all of them. Uh, the filters work accordingly to the area that you're in. And, uh, and once, this, once they're completed, they go into the completed scans folder. And if I was to delete um, the results from the view data page here, if I was to delete all of the uh, target results, then it would disappear from completed scans. Now, there is an additional feature which is going to take quite a few more weeks to do because I've got some stuff to do for the wholesale uh, people first. But there will be an additional tab here called Saved Scans where you'll be able to rerun your favorite scans. So let's say, for instance, in the future, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it is in the works and it does kind of relate to this. So in the future, you'll have your queued scans, you'll have your completed ones, and there'll be a button there to save that scan, so later you can just rerun it, and, um, and just without having to go through all the rigmarole of setting up a brand new scan. So for people who've got that, uh, that like, particular scans they like to run all the time, you'll just be able to go through and hit the rerun button on your save scan page, rerun, 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 and just get that process manager cranking again with new scans. So this is really cool. Um, I'm excited about it because this is kind of what my dream always was, is to have those super accurate image match type things with this really fast multi, multi-threaded multi um, in parallel uh, scans. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think of it. Um, there's still a few things in the works. Uh, there needs to be an exit here just to completely remove, stop and delete a scan from here if you started one you didn't want to. All that stuff's kind of happening before release. Um, and there's a few more tests I need to do just to make sure that the service can handle the load because I'm guessing um, a lot of people are going to start using this. Um, but at this point, Nate, is there any questions or comments happening that I need to see? Is there a little chat window I can open up? Yeah, there's, there's a couple. Sam says, is there no limit on how many searches you can run? So um, for my personal beta testing and just to make sure everything could handle it, we set it up for five per country. Right, but I've um, agreed that we're handling that load quite well, so we're gonna change that to 10 simultaneous scans per country. So that, so that would mean, um, or when I say country, I mean MWS key region. So that would mean you could have uh, like six product searches, a couple of reverse searches. Now the thing is you might not get to 10 because you might find that you're starting to hit the limit of um, Amazon throttling you, you might be hitting your amazon keys too hard and as soon as we start getting those errors returned to us then we have to start pausing scans and then and then waiting until um things die down a bit before we start that scan again for you so it's got a little bit of intelligence in the back end just to make sure that we don't you know that we don't hit uh amazon too fast but um, we found that with five scans running at once, particularly when we're using um, things like cache, which doesn't actually hit Amazon too hard because you're using some cache data, or uh, let me say, uh, let's say we're doing the uh, image matching title search algorithm, which is kind of, it's a little bit slower than a UPC search, so it's not hitting um, Amazon as fast. Then uh, with five scans, I'd, I, I felt like we could go as, as much as, potentially as much as double. So we're gonna look at 10 scans, and that would be a mix of product search and reverse search and wholesale. You might have four of these, four of these, and two of these just to make up your 10. And, um, and the process, the queued scan itself at the moment can handle 20 in the list. And, uh, and that's pretty much how that's sort of working to start with. Now, we have made a few small changes. You'll notice that um, the page here supports 30,000 instead of 20,000. And instead of view data at the top here saying, um, saying 500 of 20,000, it actually says um, 282 of 7,345. So that means that we've got 7,345 items that have been scanned. And whether it's due to filters or separation between processes, there's only 282 showing, which is the Walmart section here. But it does say down here now that the page supports 30,000 items maximum. So there's a few little things like that that are going on that have changed. Um, but it's all part of a big system, lots of, lots of moving pieces. And although you may want to do even more than 10 at once, and... Uh, 
you know, we're certainly going to see where we can push the limits to. This 30,000 may become 50,000. Um, we're just examining all the variables to sort of see how far we can push it out. And I'm definitely having my ears wide open uh, to hear you guys say, well, look, if you start saying, well, look, I'm hitting that 30,000 roof, um, pass your wall phone, please, uh, please open it up. So Andrea says, wish there was also a pause. Does she mean a pause in my talking? Because I can stop talking. You got, any, you got a question, Andrea? We're talking about pause and resume on scans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, a pause button um, is likely. It, look, there's a couple of really advanced features to this that we're looking at. We're also looking at being able to reorder the scans. That's in a version 2.0 as well. Uh, so you'd be able to just pick up this big bad boy, big bad toy store and drag it to the top. And, uh, and pause another one. So let's say you really wanted to, to see one over another. So at first, I don't want to say this is rudimentary because it's quite complex as it is, but at first it's going to be a functioning multiple scanning interface, which works, which is great. Um, uh, after that, we're going to work on the, the next layer of that, which will be things like um, saving scans, as you say, uh, pausing scans, uh, reordering scans, um, uh, maybe increasing the limits and uh, increasing sort of the, the uh, like modify maybe the user experience a little bit. Like right now you've got to hit this start a new search button. And what I might do is that when you actually initiate the scan, it refreshes this page to a blank page and just redirects you to the process manager so that way the page is already ready for you i mean it's not a complicated instruction to just hit that button but you want to make it as um, newbie friendly as possible so that there's less thinking to do as, as possible so that's the kind of thing that we need to think about here on the back end now i'm super excited about this because um, th this particular feature has been in the way of me finishing a couple of other big things one one being some improvements to a wholesale page and another one being a newbie look uh, which is just going to be super simple um, pick a site pick a category hit scan and we just we just inject the filters that we think are best for a newbie to start with so so that will happen next then i'm going to circle back around to um, making the version two of the process manager after that so, so there's some really, really cool things happening. Um, one, one thing that I should do before I come back and field some questions and discuss about this a bit more, one, one thing that this will do is it will help you be a little bit more experimental with your searches. So previously, um, like last week, for instance, and tell me to shut up if you want, Nate, if there's people asking questions and I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm excited about this feature. I'm so excited about this feature. This is so, this is so cool. This is, I'll fill some questions before I get onto my segue if you want. Yeah, I've got a couple, but go keep going. All right, cool. So, so what you can do, we released a feature last week and I'm running this in my main, um, my main server. And uh, we released this feature last week which also checks universal product code products for image matches. Now on the little mouse over here, it actually tells you, using this feature will approximately double the time to search, although it has the benefit of searching for additional matches that are missing the expected UPC. Now what I mean by that is a UPC to UPC search, and I'm talking about a feature that was released last week, but this is important. Because people may not be running this feature because they think, oh, well, it adds extra time. Okay, but time is your friend now. You can do that, you can experiment with with ticking this extra box, for example, because now you can start a scan and then you can, run a, you can run a new scan. And let's say, for example, that you really just want to focus on Walmart, but you want to take your time with it. You want to, you want to use that extra feature where you check the universal product code, products for image matches as well. There's nothing to stop you starting a new search of Walmart again. So you're doing Walmart a second time. All right except this time you're doing a different section of Walmart. So, so you might hit Walmart from 10 different angles all at once. So you've got electronics. And so you start, you add that to bulk and you start an electronics scan at Walmart. 
So that's underway now. I'm going to start a new search and clear that one. And I'm going to go warmer. Dude, I'm, I'm just hitting warmer here. And uh, I'm going to go to, um, let's do some baby uh, or beauty searches or something like that. And I'm going to search that one. Start a new search. You get what I'm saying here, right? And then we're going to hit Walmart again. But um, the thing is, right, it's a UPC site, but I might be using this feature, which takes longer, to also check UPC products for image matches. Now, I want to stress that um, I believe this feature is a little bit overlooked. We put that feature in there knowing that it was going to add time to a search, knowing this other feature was coming out soon, but also knowing that this hides more gold than you would possibly imagine, this particular feature. I've run searches using this new feature, this UPC products for image matches, where if I had it unticked, I found maybe like two or three profitable items in a category, and then I ran it with this, and I found all this extra gold. I found like 10 or 12 profitable items, because Amazon is an imperfect beast. They don't have the UPCs in there sometimes, the UPCs are wrong sometimes, so we, we are, we've been blindly in the past just going, all right, we're using the, the Walmart UPC, let's compare it to the Amazon UPCs, and that's going to make the matches. And sure enough, it does make the correct matches, but it also um, misses some of the stuff that's, some of the gold that's there, some with decent rank and some with profit. So if I was to duck over to the view data on this particular page, and we're going to look particularly for products that don't have UPC matches, and they are likely to have appeared from um, likely to have appeared from this new feature, this image matching feature. So I've got it set at the moment to only show items with profit. And you know, I'm just doing a really basic beauty scan and show items with profit. And I haven't done all the filtering on this yet. Um, so I'm sure that there's, there's some culling to do, but there is a lot of items here with profit. And this one here, right, this is just a random example, okay? So this is clearly the same product, right? You probably need to check the, the number of ounces in each product. So the UPC over at, Warm, at, over at uh, Target, I think this search was, is this. There was no UPC to be found over at Amazon. So this new image match features kicked in, it's matched these two items up and it's profitable. And I would need to check rank, etc. So this has got zero rank. So you're gonna to have to also check the ranks and whatnot as well, filter the ranks. I've done an unfiltered search basically. So once it's all been filtered down, there's only gonna be like a handful, but certainly more than you know, previously. But back to my key point is that this process manager will allow you to experiment with these additional features and add that extra time in there uh, because you can just start all these these extra scans. So, so um, I, well, I was really happy recently to to hear the word mismatches sort of disappear or drift away from the Facebook groups and stuff. People weren't really talking about mismatches so much anymore because managed properly and using your using your match quality filters and whatnot, you can really minimise that kind of um, that kind of issue. Now we should stop hearing the word slow because there's there's so much data that you can send through to your view data pages at once that you should not be able to sort it all, even with multiple virtu virtual assistants working for you. Um, so uh, all we're gonna do now is make it super newbie friendly as well. And, um, and then we just start adding polish and just keep on optimizing it, making, making elements of it faster and cleaner and better. And, and then- It's yeah. coming out too, right? So hey, what's that? The uh, simplified interface, right? Simplified interface. Um, there's additional columns coming for, for wholesale to do with um, how frequently Amazon has the buy box over the course of a month. There are um, additional features um, for both library and flips. Uh, there is the European Fulfillment Network coming into play. Uh, there is cross-country. Um, at it, like making sure you can also see if something's profitable to, to send it across country uh, or, or from country to country. Um, and the European Fulfillment Network ties into that. There is, in, there is improvements to the VAT system. 
And when I run out of things, then I'm going to start adding in um, also, is this, is this going to be profitable to sell it perhaps on eBay instead? Yeah. Um, there is a lot coming. Um, I want to go through all of this easy bulk stuff as well. And I want to go domain by domain and make sure that all the key categories, I want to make sure the clearance categories for websites in the easy bulk. Because sometimes the easy bulk's got the main ones, but it doesn't necessarily have some of the clearance categories. I'm going to do a smart algorithm, which um, when you're searching Walgreens, if it says buy one, get one free, I'm going to have a little toggle there saying, would you like to automatically apply the buy one, get one free uh, discounts to, like, to this solution? So that it does that maths for you as well. Um, there is a lot of stuff coming to tactical arbitrage. I don't think I'm going to get much of a break this year, um, but I'm not going anywhere from this office for the next six months. And so I'm all about just making this uh, the best possible sourcing tool on the market, hands down. No brainer to use if you're into online arbitrage. And that's even before we get to the mobile applications and mobile, you know, the mobile optimization for um, doing this all on your phone. Because I still got to do that too. So we're we're busy. We're busy. There's there's a lot coming, but this is a big step. This process manager is a huge stepping stone towards um, towards making this uh, like an invaluable tool tool that you need to stay ahead of the game in this space. So that's what I want, that's, that's what I'm hoping to make sure that you guys um, feel. And that's what I'm hoping to provide to you guys. And I don't want to rest on my laurels. I want to make sure that you guys got the best and, and that's, uh, I won't stop. All right, I've got some questions for you, Alex. First, uh, Suzanne wants to know if this works on wholesale searches. Yes, it does. Now we do have a wholesale rapid search solution. So um, wholesale rapid search, I'm actually tuning to make it a little bit faster at the moment. Um, it's, it's possibly uh, running at about 60% of the speeds that I want it to um, compared to say a potential competitor in the market. So in my beta tests, I've actually brought it up to speed. But what happens of course, is it uses a lot of the Amazon throttling when um, this is a lot of the Amazon throttling when you're doing a rapid search. So what happens if you initiate a rapid search on wholesale, it'll actually pause all of the processes in the process manager. So, um, and then it'll restart them once the, uh, the rapid search is finished. So wholesale though, what you can do is not run rapid searches if you want to. If you've got multiple CSVs and you just feel like, um, you just feel like leisurely running like, you know, 10 of your CSVs at once, just so that you can sort of go through them. Then you can just sort of start a, start a wholesale scan, not a rapid search one, just start one and start the next one and start the next one and start the next one. And um, mix in a few product searches, mix in a few reverse searches, and uh, you, can, you can play it that way. Or if you really need to see your entire wholesale manifest, this particular one as fast as you possibly can, you can run the rapid search, it'll stop everything else and then resume it once, um, once that's complete, so. Okay, Suzanne wants to know, if you have three Walmart scans running, can you tell which scan, uh, or sorry, which results come from which scan and what about duplicates? See, that's a good, uh, that's a good question because currently when you're going into here, you're sort of seeing this kind of thing, which isn't really necessarily telling you which of the Walmart scans um, are which. So um, obviously you can by selecting one and then going to your Amazon category. But uh, yeah, I can see your point. We maybe need to uh, put a, like an extra identifier in there. Say so, um, it's gonna be tricky. Because hey, in these webinars, man, we get to uh, hear from the people, and sometimes the input is uh, it's actually really solid. Nice little yeah, so that's so that's a cool idea. So, like, if we go into um, the easy box, you can actually sort of see uh, a bit of information there as to what specifically we're scanning. So, the main category, um, we could possibly work towards having the the main category in there as an extra identifier. So yeah, definitely leave that with me. I need to write some of these down actually. I've got a separate one here. So I'm gonna put extra identifier for um, 
when running multiple Walmart, for example. And how about we also say a pause feature. If I write down too many things, then the feature will take too long to get released. So I'll leave it kind of loose for now. Just mark those couple of things down. And um, can you still rename the folders? Oh, that's, you mean for save data? Save data, yeah, you can definitely do that. But for, view, for these, they're, they're still locked into certain processes and you can compare the processes across the queued and completed scans. Um, I could probably do an, a thing here where you rename processes. Um, that carries across to view data naming as well. I'll look at that too. Um, that might be in the version two. The version 2.0 has got um, a few extra bits of polish. So Hale says, when will this feature be released? So it's, I mean, I could release it in its current form right now, but it's still a few things that um, a little bit sort of messy. I kind of want to clean up a bit of stuff here. I've got a list of things. Like for instance, when you click Process Manager, this is tiny stuff. You click Process Manager, I want it to open up in its new tab, but at the moment it opens up in the same tab. So I need it to just open it. There's like, there's like 10 little things like that. Some of them are bigger than others. Um, we just got to polish up all that stuff before I'm ready to release it. But I, I don't think it'll be a week, put it that way. We need to make sure the servers are all bolstered because some of the more enthusiastic users are going to start maxing out these scans. Um, but really quickly, they're not going to waste any time to just to just that, start. That was a question that came up a couple times. Alex was um, users that were concerned with speed. I know a lot of people are already getting a ton of leads with TA, and I think some people are actually worried: Will this slow down the good thing that they've already got going? Right. So what? No, it, what can no, we? No. Yeah. So so the servers aren't going to be um, overloaded or anything like that, right? Well, without sort of getting too much into the uh, minutiae of what else we've got going on in the background, because this is not really an exciting feature per se, but we, we have also hired a full-time um, optimization expert who's going through our code to look for any areas where we can run things in parallel, where we can speed up um, using content delivery networks, uh, things that, that don't need to be loaded multiple times, um, we're going to uh, run things asynchronously. We're going to mo modify JavaScript script positioning um, to increase speed. We're looking at database optimization as well. So there's a lot of additional optimization going on uh, currently, which some of that stuff isn't live yet, that will bolster um, the, way, the speed and feel of tactical arbitrage. Like there's sometimes things happen when uh, I click a button and the menu here is concatenated for a sec for a split second, and that's because I sort of I'm working fast and I'm always clicking around and not everybody would see that sort of stuff. But I I notice a few of these um, things when I'm operating it, and all that stuff's going to get polished and cleaned up. So I optimization is is paramount to me right now. So I believe that uh, the 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 fear of tactical arbitrage being less efficient with this feature is unfounded because uh, the optimization currently that's being implemented should accelerate us past where it is right now and then with the servers, extra servers added for the new feature. I think if anything soon, tactical arbitrage will feel even zippier. It's not really a feature that I'd, I'd probably write about in the Facebook groups and whatnot because nobody really cares that much about it feeling zippier because it's kind of more of a feeling. But um, it is something that we are always working towards and aspiring towards so that um, Chrome, your Chrome browser doesn't feel like bloated or, or sluggish when you're using TA. So, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, but I, do, I would also recommend that you send in um, any bug reports if you feel personally that the new feature's sluggish because we, we would definitely like to um, analyze that and make sure that that's not happening. But I'm pretty confident at this point that that's not going to be an issue. Brian wants to know, can you set cache or cache time for each search? 
Sorry, mate. Yes. Aha uh -huh, no, Oh, for each search? Actually, yes. So um, what, if you really wanted to, I mean, I, what I could optionally do is bring the cache. I just don't want to confuse um, newcomers too much, but I could bring the cache um, setting feature to the top of each page so you could set it for three day, start a scan, start another scan at, at live, start another scan at five day. Um, you, could, you could do that. At the moment, what you would have to do for the same thing is start a scan at five day cache, and you really want live data for this brand new target sale that's come on. So you go to settings, you change the cache to live, and then you start the target sale. So it will, um, it will work with the cache depending on um, what you set it for for each scan. So please put the cache in the scan option, it's not in the main option. All oh, right, oh, oh, I knew somebody asked. <laughs> please put the uh, cache at the top of each search page as an option. All right. It's not going to be in the newbie interface when, when that's created, but I'll, I can put that in the advanced one, sure. How uh, satisfied are you, Alex, with the estimated sales? When will we have a filter on, on the search page? Uh, that is one of my jobs, actually, like estimated sales filter. Um, so I'm really satisfied at the moment with the estimated sales for both USA and UK. Now, there is a there's a lot of ways to get estimated sales. And um, I believe what we're doing is, um, is working really well. It involves plotting a whole bunch of data points from, uh, from sales that we can track. Uh, so let's say uh, at a really low rank, like, like a, a rank of 10 or something in toys, we can sort of see the velocity of sales and how fast that this guy is selling his product. And then we're also getting that at points 20 rank, average rank 30 days, 20, and then 50 and 100 and 200. And then we're getting all these points. And then we've got mathematicians on board who, who chart these nice sweeping um, equations through the middle of these points. And, uh, and then we utilize some other um, magic to work out the exact moment when that sort of becomes just one sale per month and then we sort of track it all in there and then we release that and then we sort of update that every couple of weeks. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at with that at the moment. There are some APIs I can just plug right into and, and just grab their data, but I feel like what we're doing um, and we're actually utilizing some viral launch data as well and that they've got some really nice accuracy too. So what we're doing with our own algorithms plus viral launch is a really nice sweet spot. So I'm happy with that at the moment. We're just about to release our new set of estimated sales data for UK and US probably within the next three to four days. And uh, that'll take us through until the end of the month after we've released that. So, um, so we're on to it. We're gonna have to work a little bit faster and harder come Christmas time because nobody really wants one month old data at Christmas, but um, we, we are working on that all the time and if we can, at other countries as well, um, between now and then, then we'll certainly be, be doing that too. You can't see me, can you? So since we're just answering questions, I'm gonna break out of this share. We'll let you run a reverse search like this. You should already have a storefront store, but I think 90% of all people who decide to stick with tactical arbitrage beyond the trial, anybody who decides to sort of stick with it, I think 90% of those actually already have it, but I'll just yeah, show you how at, easy. I think we're at about 3,500 3, users, which is amazing. Um, it, it's it's super super popular, and it is uh, it's definitely um, definitely an unfair advantage when you if you use it right. A lot of I've had people that I see haven't entered their keys. I'm like, what are you doing? You paid $199. <laughs> um, <laughs> why would you pay $199 and not enter your keys? If you bought Storefront Stalker and have not entered your keys, please email me or PM me so I can help you get those set up um, because it is just insanely, it make, it's as far as a shortcut to sourcing on, with tactical arbitrage, the reverse search obviously I think is the, is the fastest way to do it, but then the reverse search with the scan bestsellers feature is almost like just cheating. So you've got reverse product search, right? And so what you would normally do is import a bulk list of product codes, which are ASINs, of course. And so um, now 
normally you're like, okay, well, that's great, but where am I going to get these ASINs from? Well, sure, you can go to Amazon and you can collect them piecemeal one by one, or you can use a tool which um, collates all of the ASINs from several pages of um, categories and bring them in, uh, import those. Now, there's also a way here you can do a quick keyword search, and that doesn't require any third-party tool either. You can just like basically look for Lego, for example, um, in the toys category, and you can do a reverse product search that way. Or, um, and this is by far the fastest way, if you've got Storefront Stalker, now it's not, I always reference like those, um, those video games that you buy uh, on your phone where you've got to keep on paying to play and adding things. We don't have like a bunch of things like that in Tactical Arbitrage. This is the only thing that we have really that is integrated into TA that you would pay additional for if you want to unlock the feature. Um, but, you know, that's partly because, we, you know, this was already something that Nate had and I could see that would have a lot of benefit um, within tactical arbitrage. And so we, we uh, formed this relationship and I think it's, um, I think it's a, you know, a reasonable price considering what it does. Uh, and you'd go to Storefront Stalker and you'd say, um, I want to reverse search toys and games, hit search, and it'll start searching um, the top 100,000 best-selling toys items. Uh, you, you want to set your filters as well, of course, and say your, your return on investment and your rank filters and whatnot. But uh, when it starts running, it takes a few extra seconds because there's 100,000 products for the, um, for the top categories. And it's uh, 5,000 5, products, I believe, for the secondary categories. So I'll just show you a secondary category because it will, it'll start a lot faster. Toys and games, uh, action figures and statues. Uh, you set your return on investment and whatnot. You press search and then a reverse search for those who don't know what it does is it takes products on Amazon and then it reaches back into our database and has a look at um, the, the current stores that, um, that we've got that are in the system and whether or not they, uh, they have that item cheap enough to show you uh, profit. I don't know if I explained that very well, but basically it looks backwards. Instead of going from the source store to Amazon, it goes from the Amazon um, ASINs back to the source store and tells you where to buy these things so that you can then turn around and sell them. Yeah, I always feel like explaining that is like, when you get it through to people, it's just mind boggling, right? Because it's not, it's not just one store and you're just trying to see if there's some products on Amazon. It's all of Amazon and then 900 or how many, 800 some different third party sites. And it is scanning those to find matches from Amazon, starting with Amazon. So your results, you get a lot more results uh, a lot more quickly. It's just, it's just really one of my favorite features um, of tactical arbitrage. And it's the one feature that, um, other tools are definitely trying to emulate as best as they can because it's just so extremely uh, powerful. And it's not running because we maxed out my five scans, but I'm going to like, uh, as I said, turn that into 10 scans. Um, that's the only reason why that scan didn't start because in the queue, we've got all these other scans that are currently running. But I'm going to just try something here. I'm going to stop that scan and I probably shouldn't be beta testing stuff I like the U.S. Can we put a, a, a U.S. flag there for the USA sites placeholder? Well, it's actually going to be a little bit more than that. So if we've got a best seller scan happening, it'll say USA sites, toys, action figures. So that's, that's being added before release as well. Can we get so, a picture of me holding a U.S. flag, waving it? Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> a of me swinging it around. I'm going to stop it. Stop it. Uh, Andreas says, if I have my own XPath shop, how long is that cache cash available for my reverse searches? Um, so, so what do you, uh, yeah, so like if you've got your own XPath stuff, stuff in there, it'll, uh, it'll be cached as well. So yeah, you can definitely use, utilize that for reverse searches, no problem. I, I'm not sure exactly the answer, but you set your you set your cache settings in the settings, so you would set reverse search for sort of um, one, two, three, four, or five days, that sort of thing. Alex, this so, has been uh, 
this has been a solid, uh, a solid. What I didn't know we were going to have so many questions. Um, I'll fill out the feature update, but that's totally fine and totally cool. Um, I think it merits it merits its own webinar. Um, so if you were if you were here and your goal, I don't want to keep Alex longer than an hour. Um, it's like super. It's like the butt crack of dawn there where he is right now. He didn't know it was this time. He thought it was in three hours, and uh, it's just, so he's like he's like early in the morning there. Uh, so I don't want to keep him super late. Um, so I want to tell you guys this: if you want, first of all, tackle arbitrage is. It's so powerful that it can't. I, we can't just say it's just click button easy right away. There is so much free training inside of Tactical Arbitrage. Also, there's free training on YouTube from great people. Um, you know, different different YouTubers, um, a million, millionaire, millennial, Christopher Grant. All those people are making great content out there for free. If you want to step it up a notch and join the Tactical Academy, you can join that until Thursday for a hundred dollars off. Alex, thank you for making time in the wee hours of the morning. It is eight o'clock here. Yeah. Like, this is just this is like this is my prime time. Like I'm not <laughs> not tired at all. I would I need to one of these days I'm gonna do a webinar like during your eight p.m. <laughs> what, what's that for me? Oh, I think you I think you'll be asleep. No, I won't. <laughs> I I will wake up for a webinar to make up for all these early morning webinars I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea says it's 3 a.m. where he is. Where is that? My goodness. Oh, he's in, he's, he's got to be in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. Nice. Uh, awesome, Good man. Cool. Thank you guys. There will be a replay. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Um, and again, there's also a playlist link up here. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube to my other online arbitrage videos, again, use code ER14 to get a, an extended 14 day trial of tactical arbitrage for just $1. That will give you enough time to really use it. If you start a trial, please do yourself a favor and actually give it the time that it deserves. 30 minutes a day for 14 days, you will be rolling by the end of it. You'll be finding money. If not, cancel, you're out $1. That's a soda pop. Uh, it's not a big deal and you can say that you tried. I'll get this. I'll get this feature out like within that 14 days, like probably halfway through it, so that there's plenty of time for you to play fool around with that once you know the basics. Yep. Yep. All right, perfect, guys. So Alex, awesome new feature, guys. If you are new, if you are a tactical arbitrage user and you have multiple accounts, this might be uh, you, this might be huge news for you. If you're a user at all, this is huge news for you. Um, if you have never used it, uh, you might take this for granted going forward. But I'm, this is an amazing feature. Ask anybody who's been using it how incredibly powerful this new addition is to an already incredibly powerful software. Alex, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, guys, you. take it easy. Have a good night. Alex, thank you once again, my friend. And I will see you in like five minutes, I'm sure, on Facebook. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you guys.